Zorn's lemma, also known as the Kuratowski Zorn lemma, is a proposition of set theory that states, suppose a partially ordered set P has the property that every chain has an upper bound in P, then the set P contains at least one maximal element. It is named after the mathematicians Max Zorn and Kazimierz Kuratowski. Background The terms used in the statement of the lemma are defined as follows. Suppose as a partially ordered set, a subset T is totally ordered if for any S, T and T we have S, T or T, S. Any such totally ordered set T is called the chain. Such a set T has an upper bound U and P if T, U for all T and T. Note that U is an element of P but need not be an element of T. An element M of P is called a maximal element if there is no element X in P for which M less than X. Note that P is not explicitly required to be non-empty. However, the empty set is a chain, hence is required to have an upper bound, thus exhibiting at least one element of P. An equivalent formulation of the lemma is therefore, suppose a non-empty partially ordered set P has the property that every non-empty chain has an upper bound in P, then the set P contains at least one maximal element. The distinction may seem subtle, but proofs involving Zorn's lemma often involve taking a union of some sort to produce an upper bound, the case of an empty chain, hence empty union is a boundary case that is easily overlooked. Zorn's lemma is equivalent to the well-ordering theorem and the axiom of choice, in the sense that any one of them, together with the zamello frankel axioms of set theory, is sufficient to prove the others. It occurs in the proofs of several theorems of crucial importance, for instance the hahn banach theorem in functional analysis, the theorem that every vector space has a basis, Tikhonov's theorem in topology stating that every product of compact spaces is compact, and the theorems in abstract algebra that every non-zero ring has a maximal ideal and that every field has an algebraic closure. Example, Zorn's lemma can be used to show that every non-trivial ring R with unity contains a maximal ideal. In the terminology above, the set P consists of all ideals in R except R itself, which is not empty since it contains at least the trivial ideal, zero. This set is partially ordered by set inclusion. Finding a maximal ideal is the same as finding a maximal element in P. The ideal R was excluded because maximal ideals by definition are not equal to R. To apply Zorn's lemma, take a non-empty totally ordered subset T of P. It is necessary to show that T has an upper bound, i.e., that there exists an ideal IR which is bigger than all members of T but still smaller than R. Take I to be the union of all the ideals in T because T contains at least one element, and that element contains at least zero, the union I contains at least zero and is not empty. To prove that I is an ideal, note that if A and B are elements of I, then there exist two ideals J, K, T such that A is an element of J, and B is an element of K. Since T is totally ordered, we know that J, K or K, J. In the first case, both A and B are members of the ideal K, therefore their sum A plus B is a member of K, which shows that A plus B is a member of I. In the second case, both A and B are members of the ideal J, and thus A plus B I. Furthermore, if R are, then R and R are elements of J and hence elements of I. Thus, I is an ideal in R. Now, an ideal is equal to R if and only if it contains one. So, if I were equal to R, then it would contain one. And that means one of the members of T would contain one and would thus be equal to R. But R is explicitly excluded from P. The condition of Zorn's lemma has been checked, and thus there is a maximal element in P. In other words, a maximal ideal in R. Note that the proof depends on the fact that our ring R has a multiplicative unit 1. Without this, the proof wouldn't work and indeed the statement would be false. For example, the ring with its additive group and trivial multiplication has no maximal ideal. Its ideals are precisely the additive subgroups. 
The fact a group by a proper subgroup is a divisible group, hence certainly not finitely generated, hence has a proper non-trivial subgroup, which gives rise to a subgroup an ideal containing sketch of proof. A sketch of the proof of Zorn's lemma follows, assuming the axiom of choice. Suppose the lemma is false. For every totally ordered subset T we may then define a bigger element B, because T has an upper bound, and that upper bound has a bigger element. To actually define the function B, we need to employ the axiom of choice. Using the function B, we are going to define elements A0 less than A1 less than A2 less than A3 less than, in P. This sequence is really long. The indices are not just the natural numbers, but all ordinals. In fact, the sequence is too long for the set P, there are too many ordinals, more than there are elements in any set, and the set P will be exhausted before long and then we will run into the desired contradiction. The I are defined by transfinite recursion. We pick A0 in P arbitrary and for any other ordinal W we set or equals B. Because the A are totally ordered, this is a well-founded definition. This proof shows that actually a slightly stronger version of Zorn's lemma is true. If P is a posit in which every well-ordered subset has an upper bound, and if X is any element of P, then P has a maximal element that is greater than or equal to X. That is, there is a maximal element which is comparable to X. History the Hausdorff maximal principle is an early statement similar to Zorn's lemma. K. Kuratowski proved in 1922 a version of the lemma close to its modern formulation. Essentially the same formulation was independently given by Max Zorn in 1935, who proposed it as a new axiom of set theory replacing the well-ordering theorem, exhibited some of its applications in algebra, and promised to show its equivalence with the axiom of choice in another paper, which never appeared. The name Zorn's Lemma appears to be due to John Tukey, who used it in his book Convergence and Uniformity and Topology in 1940. Albuquerque's Theory des Ensembles of 1939 refers to a similar maximal principle as Le Theorema de Zorn. The name Kuratowski Zorn Lemma prevails in Poland and Russia. Equivalent forms of Zorn's Lemma Zorn's Lemma is equivalent to three main results. Hausdorff Maximal Principle, Axiom of Choice, Well-Ordering Theorem. A well-known joke alluding to this equivalency is attributed to Jerry Boner. The axiom of choice is obviously true, the well-ordering principle obviously false, and who can tell about Zorn's lemma? Moreover, Zorn's lemma implies some major results in other mathematical areas. For example, Banach's extension theorem which is used to prove one of the most fundamental results in functional analysis, the hahn banach theorem. Every vector space has a Hamel basis, a result from linear algebra. Every commutative unital ring has a maximal ideal, a result from ring theory. Tikhonov's theorem in topology. In this sense, we see how Zorn's lemma can be seen as a powerful tool, especially in the sense of unified mathematics. In popular culture, the 1970 film Zorn's Lemma is named after the lemma. This lemma was referenced on The Simpsons on the episode Bart's New Friend.